What's going on, guys? Welcome to the channel. What's up, Victor? Uh, AFK9. So welcome, guys, to the channel. Um, I'm actually here, and I got some things going on in the garage. It's a mess right now, but uh, it's not a hard install, what I'm doing. It's for an upcoming video tomorrow night. You guys are going to love it. I went out and ripped the GT350 today and had a blast, but... This is, this is really an, an easy install that I'm doing right now. Um, a, quite a bit easier for the most part than I thought it was gonna be until I got to the bumper portion and it became tedious. Not difficult, just really tedious, the last portion. What's up, Michael? What's up, uh, X Gaming? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> I, don't think I, I don't think I know you. Um, anyway, so... What is up, Cohen and Willie? What's up, Josh? Uh, so today I ripped the GT350. And let me tell you guys, with the back seats down. Um, oh, you do? Cool. What's up, bro? Uh, so today I, I ripped the car real good uh, in, in some nice turns coming down the highway. And it just sounds so good with the seats down. It really does. With the seats down and the windows up, it I guess you could say it's like a cross between a high revving V8 version of a Type R mixed with a Ferrari. Just sounds so good. It really was my second time taking it that high in the RPMs uh, and shifting. And the backfire is amazing. It just it just sounds so good. Uh, and not only that, I'm taking turns today at 55 miles an hour, and we're talking turns that are, I guess you could say like. 90 degrees damn near and the car just handles so well it really does I've, I've never driven a car that was this well refined in its ability to turn its ability to oversteer without breaking the rear loose and not only that the traction control system's amazing and it just sounds great overall it's definitely a far superior engineer vehicle than than a hellcat is um What's up, Daniel? Uh, and I loved my red eye. I really did. Um, I loved the red eye. I loved the Hellcat chargers that I had. Uh, I loved my Durangos. Uh, but the, the realistic point of view um, and, and the, the honest truth is, in my, like my opinion from driving all these Hellcats and driving this Mustang, is that the refinement and the quality of how the vehicle responds on the road uh, and the input is far superior to any Dodge I've ever driven. Now, I'm not talking about necessarily ride quality. I'm not necessarily talking about luxury of the interior. Forget that. I'm talking electric steering, the input feeling sensation of the steering. Dodge is, um, you know, a little bit loose until you go into track steering. And then it's stiff but it feels like all it's doing is stiffening the steering wheel and numbing the feel of the drive. It's really hard to explain, but when I get behind the wheel of the GT350 and throw the steering into normal comfort or sport, it actually feels like the input is softer and then it gets progressively stiffer until you get to sport, which is basically the track setting. And you can feel that the input is not just numbed or just stiff for the steering wheel, you're actually feeling a stiff input from the road. So what I mean is there's a disconnect in the Dodges. Um, and what that means is all I feel like when you're driving, even though they feel good, when you're driving an SRT Hellcat or you know a Red Eye, when you turn it on track mode for the steering, it feels like that your input from the road stays the same, but the steering wheel just gets stiffer so there's more resistance, which is good but that makes the steering numb. When you're driving this car, for instance, when I'm driving the GT350 and I turn the steering wheel uh, to sport, which is basically track mode because it goes comfort, uh, normal, and sport. So I guess it's the same thing. Might as well just call it normal, sport, and track. But when I'm in track mode for steering on the GT350, as it progressively gets stiffer, it's not just the steering wheel that's stiffening up. I can feel that the actual input from the road and how I'm handling on the road is actually stiffer as well. It's not just the steering wheel that's stiffer. The whole system just responds to the road so much better 
Um, and the chassis is so much more rigid and balanced and tight. But even with the tight chassis and it being rigid with the sway bars and the strut braces and the stiff springs and the dampening and everything that's going on, the car still drives very uh, comfortably, even in track mode. So um, the GT350 is actually softer than the Red Eye is. Both of them in track mode. The GT350 rides better, but it handles better too and has better feedback. So get that. It's actually more stable, stiffer, handles better, but still is more comfortable to be in. Very hard to explain if you haven't dri driven a GT350. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, I'll show you guys what's going on here. What's up, Fencer? I'm just reading comments here. Oh, 313. The exhaust was sick. Are you meaning like the red eye or you mean my car is sick? Like the GT350. Um, oh, AFK9 is from Detroit. Yeah, there's a lot of people in Detroit uh, that subscribe to me. Actually, there's quite a few. Um, and Mike, I think I thought Michael was from Detroit too. Um, let's get the likes up. I appreciate that. Sorry about that. My stupid phone decided a pop-up notification. I appreciate that, Ace. And Brandon, let me show you guys what's going on. A little sneak peek. So I've got the car all pulled apart. Who would ever think that I would have to get the car into this position just to install a grill? Like, really? Like, I, I have to install the grill in there. But in order to get the grill in, you got to get the bumper off. In order to get the bumper off, you got to get the splash guard attached, uh, you know, disassembled and pulled off. You got to get the wheels off so you can get the fender liner off. So the, the wheels and fender liner and bumper, everything's got to come off just to access the stupid grill. But um, it's put together very nicely. Um, you're not going to want to miss tomorrow's upload. It's it's going to be great. I got the GT350R um, front uh, emblem going on with the grill. I'll show you guys over here. There is the GT350 grill. So the 350 grill is off. All right, it's right there. Um and the GT350R grill is installed. Now I'm gonna show you guys some stuff now, but you're gonna see some more for the vlog tomorrow. By the way, I am selling that GT350R splitter. So if anybody wants a replica GT350R splitter, 500 bucks and it's yours, fits perfectly. Um, I had to add secondary holes so they fit better. And I fit it, it fits perfectly, it's brand new. I've never driven on it. I ended up buying an extra one. Um, and I'm also selling this GT deck lid right here because I dropped off the trunk to get painted. This deck lid has no damage at all. It's mint. Uh, there's like a little scratch here where the emblem was removed, but you can stick in any emblem you want and just epoxy it from the other side. Anybody who needs a GT uh, rear deck lid, I'm selling that as well. Um, I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek. There's one of the carbon fiber spoilers. My trunk and carbon fiber spoiler will be here Tuesday. Tuesday, that is getting done. Um, but Quirk Parts got me my stuff. They sent it. I'm very, very happy. Um, the scratch is definitely buffable. It's really not. You won't even see the scratch. You won't even see it. Look, I'll even show you. The, the scratches that are like right here are going to be covered by the emblem. The emblem is going to cover it. Um, there's a little bit of a scratch. Um, the emblem's going to basically come to here. So there's like a little nick of a scratch, like right there that can just be buffed out. But as you can see, there's, it's like brand new. Like I'll even give it a buff job. I'll even buff it out. If anybody wants it and wants to buy it, I'll buff it. All you got to do is just get an emblem. You can put whatever emblem you want on it. Fits all 2015 through 2020 Mustangs. Doesn't matter if it's an EcoBoost, GT, Shelby, don't matter. It's the exact same rear deck lid. So um, I don't want to give it away and show you guys the red badge that's installed right now. But I, I'm going to be doing that for the vlog tomorrow. So there's the Ford Performance Springs right there. I'm um, going to be lowering the car this weekend. It's probably tomorrow so I can get this car aligned. But up here 
is uh, another part that got sent to me from Quirk Parts. I want to give a shout out to Quirk Parts in uh, New Hampshire. Uh, they're, or excuse me, I think they're New Hampshire or Rhode Island. I have to double check. I, I'm pretty sure it's uh, New Hampshire, but uh, I'll show you guys what's going on here. I'm sure you guys are going to dig this. All right, so here we go. I'm trying not to touch it because I don't want to get a bunch of fingerprints on it, especially considering I haven't installed it yet. All right, this is going on the trunk that's getting painted right now and getting the GT350 spoiler. What do you guys think? You guys like that? So that's going on the trunk that's getting painted right now. That goes on with the Type R carbon fiber spoiler. So that's going to go on the back, uh, like I said, with this carbon fiber GT350R spoiler. So that completes the GT350R in the rear. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Got to love that. Red badge, red on black always looks good. Um, so we've got that. And of course, we got the one that's going on the front right now, which is tomorrow's video. So a lot of really cool stuff uh, happening. I just thought it would be really cool to show you guys how much of the front end had to be like taken apart just to get to the grill. <laughs> it's just crazy. I just can't believe how much stuff had to get removed. It's it's really not that hard though to remove all this stuff. It's more tedious and and just making sure it gets done right. Um, you know, like one of the hard parts is, you know, a lot of people break tabs on their bumper by sliding it in here and pulling it out without, you know, taking it off properly. You just really got to use a, a flathead screwdriver when you're taking things like this off. And you can see that, the tabs are almost completely mint. So it's it's not hard to do. Uh, a lot of people just don't like taking bumpers off. They're just, like I said, tedious and require a lot of different things to come off. But this is taking um, a lot longer than I would, you know, be taking normally because I'm taking my time because it's such a new car. I'm really just going over everything a hundred times to make sure that it's coming off properly, going on properly, and nothing gets broken. So you can see the massive coolers. Now look at this. Here's something really interesting. These coolers are bigger than the ones that are on the Hellcat. And the Hellcat is supercharged. And the coolers in the front are for the supercharger and the transmission cooler is in the center on the Hellcat. These things are bigger than the after coolers on the Hellcat. And all they're really doing is cooling the oil. And it's just insane how big they are. And they're on both sides. Like, it's just crazy. Like, you see how big they are. It's nuts. And then this right here is all one piece on the front. Very thick plastic very stable. And this is the inlet for the air and it gets fed uh, directly from here, these holes right here, which is not very much really. It really is not very much at all. Um, and considering they block this off right here, it's not getting any air really rammed in except for like what's right here, uh, which, which is, I guess you could say is enough but it's also sucking it from around the inside of the bumper. And in reality, it's almost like, I guess you could say a velocity stack. It's kind of cool. So it sits, it sits like right here. And so what, what's actually happening here is it's sucking all the air from in the bumper area. So it truly is a cold air intake and it's sealed around the hood. So it's a quite a good, good setup from Ford. Um, Real snake there on the right. Yeah, exactly. That's my son's uh, little Shelby Cobra. Motor boobs red. I, no, I have no idea. I, I agree. It's ridiculous gaming uh, how, how much stuff has got to come off. Um, I appreciate the likes. I appreciate that, Michael. I appreciate that crypto. But it, it's a lot. Like I said, it's a lot of fun uh, working on cars. I've always loved doing it. Uh So I am going to be finishing this up tonight, hopefully. And uh, I was thinking about getting on the live streams for the games tonight, but I might wait 
for tomorrow and do a Friday and a Saturday night stream. We'll see how things go uh, because I've got to get this bumper back on and then I have to get it, you know, straightened out, which is going to be really a pain in the butt because the uh, brake ducts have to go over the coolers and it's really hard to lift those over the coolers while lifting the bumper that weighs 35 pounds. So I'm going to attempt to do that on my own here. And that's going to be a little bit tricky. It's probably going to take me like 20 minutes to get this bumper and stuff back on, but it's worth it. It's going to look great. If you like doing it, then it's easier. You at least enjoy it. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. I definitely, uh, oops, come on. Why does my phone keep doing that? My phone just, the whole case just cracked and almost dropped my phone. <laughs> Oh my God, what a long day. Um, yeah, I've been at this all day. This is a long vlog. I've been I've been doing some running around. Got a killer vlog coming at you guys tomorrow night. Uh, I ripped the GT350 and recorded all of it. Some nice POV drive and it sounds nasty. Um, so a lot of fun stuff coming at you guys tomorrow. Um, well, the reason why I'm not gonna drill, off, uh, drill out the blocked off holes is because Ford determined in a wind tunnel that making the hole or the opening in the bumper smaller actually improved aerodynamics. In the 2015, 16, and I believe the 17s all the way through into 18s maybe, the front grille opening was huge. And in the 19 and 20, they made it smaller because they improved aerodynamics. Um, so believe it or not, uh, Ford actually found out that closing it made it better. I appreciate that X gaming. I remember I talked to you last year when you came by my house and, uh, you said you want to start a YouTube channel and you had, uh, well, you already started it and you had some subscribers and you were trying to, to grow it. So definitely don't give up, man. Definitely do not give up. Um, so I'm going to get this car put back together. As you guys can see here, um, everything's clean and spotless. Like, look at the brake lines. Like, this is crazy. Like, how much stuff and how much, you know, engineering went into this car. But, you know, everything's clean. I went in here and spent some serious time wiping everything down and, you know, making it spotless. Even the strut towers, um or the strut shock assembly, uh, I wiped them all down. Um, AFK9, I'm going to be definitely doing some more Mopar news. Um, I'm definitely going to be keeping up on top of that. So, yeah, we're going to, um, I'm going to get to, you know, getting this together and uh, getting it back assembled and stuff like that. And... Um, then I'm going to try to get on the live stream for the games tonight. So I don't know, like I said, it's probably closer to like nine 30. I don't, I can't see the clock or I mean eight 30. No, no, it's nine 30. I said eight 30. Um, it's like nine 45 or something like that now. So by the time I get done with this and get in there, it might be closer to 11. So I'm not sure exactly if we're going to stream tonight on the games, probably tomorrow. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow night. It really is. We're going to have some serious fun, but um, got to gotta get this finished up. And tomorrow I've got to get the lowering springs on. Uh, that's really not a hard job considering I've already got the wheels and the off and the car jacked up. Um, you know, there's a lot of install guys that say to remove the calipers when doing lowering springs. I'm not doing that. That's just, there's no need for it. And I know why they say that. They say to remove the lowerings or remove the caliper so you can get the rotor and the caliper off because they weigh 70 pounds together. But all you really need is to put a jack under there with a piece of wood and you can just pull the shock assembly out. I don't like messing with brakes. I don't, I just don't. Um, all it takes is one cross thread or one bolt not to be torqued properly. And then your braking system's fucked or you could die. You got to remove it or you're doing an install. It's fine. But in this situation, there's just no need at all to touch the calipers. There just isn't. Um, there's plenty of room. The only reason is, is for weight. And if you take your time, no need to do it. I hate taking calipers off. Um, Although I am doing the red calipers from the GT350R, and when I do that, 
I'm going to have to remove them, put the pads in the new ones and, and install those and then bleed the whole system. But it's going to be worth it. Um, if you've never done a brake job before, you typically start on the passenger rear, then driver rear, then passenger front, then driver front, because you always start from the furthest position from the ABS system, which is right here. So if you guys have never done a brake job before, or you have, but you're trying to figure out the best way to do it, um, or you're ever changing calipers like I'm going to be doing, once they're installed, you got to bleed from the furthest point. So if your ABS system is on the passenger side, you want to start with the driver rear. Whatever side of the vehicle the ABS is on, you always start the opposite side in the rear to start your bleeding. So unfortunately, when I install these calipers in here, I don't know if you guys can see it, back here is the line. And once I install the line, I'm going to have to, you know, get the brake pads put in there, the retainer clips and pins and slide it on and bolt it in and torque to spec. And I'm going to have to do that on both sides and the same with the rear. So it's probably going to take me about three, four hours to do that. And I'm going to have to get the rear end jacked up because uh, all four wheels going to have to be off at the same time. And the reason I say that is because once everything's installed, I'm going to have to get a friend or someone to pump the brakes and then bleed the rear until all the air is out. Then I'm going to have to keep adding fluid and bleeding the other rear and then work my way to the front. And once I top it off again and most of the air is out, I've got to go through the system and bleed it all again to make sure there's no air left in the system. So it could take 30 to 40 minutes to bleed it in addition to the job. So this is going to be like a six-hour job but it's really worth it because the red Brembos look great. Um, so that's definitely uh, going to be a lot of fun. I thought about coating those and buying stickers, but it just doesn't make any sense to do that because then it ruins those, those calipers. They'll never be as good as a factory coating. So I'm going to sell these calipers once I get the red ones installed. So that's pretty cool. So if you guys have never done a brake job, uh, it's really easy. You just got to like, you know, you know, follow the uh, specs, torque specs, stuff like that. And maybe I should do a write-up on how to do a brake job. I might do that. So might eventually do that. Teach you guys how to do some more stuff. And of course, this bumper right here, give you guys a little sneak peek. Um, I had to pull it off with the splash shield because I wasn't going to separate all this stuff. It's a lot of nonsense to separate nonetheless. So hopefully you guys are pumped to see all the stuff coming for the GT350. I'm going to take it to a road course and I am going to be challenging uh, some cars on a road course for sure. What I'm thinking about doing is challenging a Hellcat. I really want to challenge a Hellcat on a road course. It'll be a lot of fun, a lot more power than I have. I'll even challenge a Hellcat that's got a tune. Doesn't matter to me. Um, but I, I personally don't think a Hellcat, I don't. I personally just don't think a Hellcat's going to be able to keep up with me on a road course, um, considering I'm pushing damn near 600 horsepower and can go around corners like, like nobody's business. I just don't see how... 100 horsepower is going to make up for the ability that the GT350 has in the turns. Now, if I was versing a red eye that had, say, 1,000 horsepower, it might be a little closer, um, but power is not the answer on a road course. It's just not. Um, I mean, if you've got a car with 300 horsepower and a car with 800, then even if the car with 800 is really, really bad, as long as you got a good driver, it might actually make up for it. But um, one or 200 horsepower is not going to make up for that much of a difference in a road course. I think that a Hellcat would would be sweating bullets to keep up with the GT350 on a road course. Even in the straights as it started to catch the GT350, as soon as we go into the turns, two and three turns in a row, there would be like two to three second gap right there that have to be closed on every straight. But it would be fun. It'd be fun to, to go out there and beat up on some Hellcats on a road course. It really would. Uh, it's a nasty machine in the corners. It really is. I even installed these. What do you guys think of these? I even got the lime green ones to match the paint. As you guys can see right here, I got the uh, lime green ones. I got the red one back there. 
It's not that big, but it's just in case somebody wants to see it. Um, but yeah, those are the green ones. I should really get some of these made uh, in lime green. Yeah, I can give you guys, um, I can get you guys some, some stickers and stuff like that. Um, let's see what they cost. But if I get them at the right price, I can't imagine them being more than five bucks. So we'll see. I'm going to see if I can do like a, um, like a, buy pack or something like that, a buy-in where you can buy like a hundred of them, get a killer deal. And this way I'll put them up in the store and, you know, see what I can do. But if anybody wants those, let me know. I got new merch below this video right now. I got GT350, Demon, and Hellcat merch. I have Venom-proof merchandise for the Hellcats and the Demons and the Red Eyes. And then I've got Venom Kills for the GT350 guys. Um, so yeah, a lot of merchandise below the video. And <clears throat> I'm going to get back to doing this. I just want to hit you guys up with a status update on the car. Um, Chris, I am doing the front grill emblem for the GT350R. And then, of course, I am going to be doing lowering springs tomorrow. The car is already up in the air. So all I have to do is put like an extra 30 minutes on each side to get the struts out. And I'll start getting the lowering springs on. So if everything works out Saturday, I go get alignment and the car will be completely lowered and the front grill will be done. So got a lot of videos coming for you guys. Um, I am planning on doing forced induction and the cheaper way to do it is going to be most likely an Edelbrock supercharger if I want to go to the cheap route because, or, or a pro charger, pro charger or a roots Edelbrock TVS style blower. Uh, those are both going to be about seven grand. However, if I really want to be different, Whipple's like nine grand for the same price. I can go twin turbo from Hellion and do their sleeper kit. And the turbos get mounted underneath the downpipes, which means, um, which means no one's going to know it's there. And I really want to do the sleeper kit because I can get on six to eight pounds of boost, I can get about 750 wheel on pump and about 900 or 800 wheel, excuse me, on E85. If I really want to push it to 10 pounds of boost or 11 pounds, I can get about 750 to 800 on pump and about 900 or 950 on E85. Now, these engines will reliably handle 12 pounds of boost, no problem. So... It's the transmission that's the weak link here, not the engine. Now, I know there's a lot of people that are going to say, oh, the GT350, the Voodoo engine, it's going to blow. Oh, my God. They're going to freak out. No. Um, if you really look at all the people that have had their engines blown, they've had spun bearings, oil consumption, rods to the block. Yes. But all of those, every last one of them were before 2019. In 2019, this GT350 engine, the Voodoo version 2, got forged H-beam rods. Uh, it got better uh, crank rod bearings. Yeah, the crankshaft itself and everything was, you know, everything was just redone. The, the block itself is a GT500 block, so it's a lot better and a lot stronger of an engine. Now, you fast forward to 2019 and 2020 to see what's happened to the engines that have blown for 2019 and 2020, because there has been like five or six of them. All of them have had valves fall into the cylinder. None of them have a blown block. None of them have rod bearings that are spun. None of them have oil consumption issues, meaning something else is going wrong with them, not the bottom end, and only a select few. And Ford has figured out somewhere along the line, they had a bad batch of valves. That's right. They had a very piss poor batch of valve retainers, and that has caused a couple of the engines to drop valves. Now, um, this has only happened to a couple of different people. And Every single person that has had an engine drop a valve on the newer GT350s, they've had less than 600 miles. Uh, all of them had like 200, 300, 500, one had six. There may have been one guy that had like a thousand miles, but pretty much if you have a thousand or less miles, that's where it's happening. Anything over, it hasn't. No one that has a 2019 or a 2020 has more than a thousand miles and had a valve drop. So I guess as long as you make it out of the break-in procedure, 
then your engine doesn't have the issue. Um, and most people that drop a valve have dropped a valve even before hitting redline. Like it's a couple of hundred miles. One guy had it happen at 50 miles. So it's safe to say that from seeing this, that the bottom end of the engine is no longer a problem. Ford addressed that. They just had a bad batch of valve uh, retainers. And now that we see that it's only happening to a select few, um, it's most likely a problem we won't see much of. They, Ford has really fixed the Voodoo engine big time for 2019 and 2020. Um, yeah, and braking in properly too. Uh, yeah, right, Alan. No ticking fleas here. I know a tuner in Cali that tunes Pro Charge GT 315R. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Too far for me, but definitely cool. Um, I appreciate that, Raphael. What's up, Fencer? Um, what about 10 Transmission in New Jersey? Uh, I think I've heard the name, but I haven't been there. They put out incredible numbers. Yeah, pro chargers do. They definitely do. Victor, I am lowering it 0.78 inches, which is th a little over three quarters of an inch. Uh, I just cannot wait until I have my house and get back my Shelby GT350 and come after you in speed. I love you guys driving passion. I appreciate that, man. I really do. Just going through to make sure I didn't miss any comments. I try not to miss any of them. No, definitely not going to do that. Yeah, I got to keep the oil in the dip, zip, dipstick for sure. No doubt. Uh, Bradley Crow, I don't know what, what you mean by that because the engine is definitely stronger and has a lot less issues. Um, but yeah, that's the goal. Eventually, twin turbo, the Hellion sleeper kit. Uh, looking at doing that for... I'm probably going to go conservative. I'm probably going to go three tunes if I can help it. I'd like to go, because it's electronic boost controller, so I'd like to go maybe six pounds, 650 wheel on pump, and then maybe 10 pounds, 750 wheel on pump, and then 11 pounds, 900 wheel on E85. I'll probably drive the car on 650 wheel all the time. So the car is going to have a very modest amount of power and boost. The transmission engine will live a long time like that as long as I maintain it. The only time I'm going to go to 750 or 900 is when I race people once in a while. I'll probably drive it at 650 most of the time. Although, like I said, this engine can handle about 900 to 1,000 wheel, no problem. The transmission is the problem. Apparently, its limit is 800 wheel. Between 700 and 800 wheel, this transmission starts acting really weird and over 800, it's it's pretty risky. So 900 wheel on E85, I'm not gonna be able to power shift. I'm gonna have to try to not beat it up. Realistically, 700 wheel is the sweet spot for this car and transmission. As long as the tune is spot on and Palm Beach Dino does a great job, so I know it will be, as long as it's spot on and I don't grind gears or bounce off the rev limiter, keep the oil changed, keep the oil level proper, keep the maintenance up, 700 or 750 wheel is a very good number for this car. Very safe, very reliable, and a very good number. That's the equivalent of a Hellcat making 850 because this car is 1,000 pounds less. So realistically, that's, that's good for like a low 10-second pass in the quarter mile, although this is not a quarter mile car at all, not even meant for that. But... Um, there really is not much need to go over 750. There just isn't because the car is so light. Got a lightweight battery coming. Got a seat delete going on. Going to be getting lighter wheels. This car is going to weigh 3,500 pounds. That's, a, that's like 1,100 pounds lighter than a Charger and 1,050 lighter than a Challenger. So, I mean, realistically, this car at 750 is like a Hellcat pushing 900 damn near. So, I really don't need to go over 750. Although, if I do have 900 wheel, this car will be un just unbelievably godlike fast because of how light it is. It's just, but it's just too much. It really is just too much. This car with 900 would be a McLaren 720 killer. And, you know, there's probably a lot of McLaren lovers out there that would laugh at that or think it's bullshit. But 
The McLaren's 3,300 pounds. This is 3,500 pounds. It's 200 pounds difference. The McLaren makes 700 wheel. This would make 900. There's no way the McLaren would win, not from a good roll. This is just, this is just a really good car. The, the power to weight ratio is unbelievable. This, this very well could be one of the nastiest cars I've ever built. Like, in fact, it is going to be the nastiest car I've ever built because the power to weight ratio. Um, so why not go Tremec? This is a Tremec transmission. Um, I believe it's a 3160. Is that the number? I can't remember. I think it's a 3160. I have to check. But it's it's really light. The transmission's light and it can't take a beating. And I don't want to put the Tremec 6060 in from the GT500, although it'll bolt right up. Uh, it's very beefy and that transmission can handle like a thousand wheel easily. The problem is that transmission weighs like 50 pounds more than this one. And I'm trying desperately to not add any weight. It's bad enough. The turbos and the intercooler and the exhaust piping is going to add like 50 pounds. I don't want to add any more weight, which is why I got a lightweight battery. I'm trying to keep the weight down. So I wouldn't want to go be throwing one of those beefy Tremec 6060s in there and adding all kinds of weight. That would really suck. Um, I I appreciate that, uh, CJ. I really do. Um, so yeah, it, it's going to be a lot of fun, though. It's just the six has a nice one too. Yeah, he definitely does. Uh, Fencer aftermarket clutches. I'm probably going to go with an exity stage two organic. If I can get one, one, I don't, I like organic clutches, but I might have to go with a stage two. Um, uh, should I get a Hellcat stock clutch or McLeod for a five, seven, six speed? Uh, if you're not going boost, you don't need a McLeod. You can stick with stock. Um, but yeah, I, the weakness of this car is definitely the transmission. Um, I, I don't know if I'd call that weak. I mean, it can handle 750 wheel before it becomes a risk. So, I mean, that's a lot of power. I wouldn't consider that a weak link, but definitely weaker than the engine considering the engine will do 12 pounds and 12 pounds on pump is over 850 probably. And on E85, it's over 950. So realistically, the, the engine will handle a thousand horsepower. The trans just won't do it. It just won't. Uh, it starts to get finicky, finicky. The the synchros will kick the gear out. Um, I was right. Yeah, Michael, it was the Tremec 30, 3160. Um, the Tremec 3650, that's the transmission that came in the original GT500. No, not the original GT500. That's the five-speed that came in um, the 05 to 09 Mustang GTs. Definitely don't want the 3650. Um, unless... Unless the 3650 is the one that came in the original GT500. I can't remember. There's a couple of them. Um, I appreciate that, Raphael. Yes, yeah, so I'm really thinking about, you know, I don't want to take the trans out and build it. I really don't. Um, I really want to drive the car stock-like with more power because if I'm going to pull the trans and build it, I might as well pull the engine and build it too. I'm not trying to do any of that. I'm trying to bolt on turbos, race, have some fun. And if I decide to sell it, pull the turbos off. That's it. I don't want to have to mess around with anything. So um, I've seen a lot of guys run 700 wheel, 750 wheel on these cars and uh, not have any transmission issues. And I've seen guys run 800 or 900 and they drive the shit out of it. The trans blows like it's just a six. I think he blew his at 850 or 900 wheel. Then again, Fat House Fab's got quite a few thousand wheel horsepower GT350s and the transmissions are okay, but there is a reason for that. It's called MoTeC fuel management. And what happens, it does boost by gear. In your lower gears, first gear, second gear, and third gear mostly, um, you have more torque multiplication, meaning that because you accelerate so fast, you're actually putting down more multiplier of torque which in turn is more stressful in the transmission. So with the MoTeC fuel system management, it actually limits the boost to like four pounds, three or four pounds in first gear, five pounds in second, seven pounds in third, and you don't really get full boost until near red line in third. That's basically the same thing as uh, you, you could say that the um, McLaren 720 has. 
uh, they have boost by gear. And that's basically what it is. If you boost by gear the GT350, you probably could get away with 950 wheel and the transmission will be totally fine because you're not going to be beating the transmission up. It's not hard on a transmission to do a third gear or a fourth gear pull from say 40 or 50 or 60 miles an hour to 130. That, that can be stressful to a degree, but it's not, it's not the same thing as doing a first gear pull with 900 wheel. 900 wheel horsepower with drag radials on this car, the transmission would fall clean the fuck out. There'd be no way it would handle that. There's just no way. There's no way in a million years with 900 wheel horsepower and drag radials would you go to the drag strip and launch the shit out of this car. That transmission would grenade. So you got to have boost by gear. And the only way to do that properly with a Ford uh, is, is to use MoTeC. And uh, the MoTeC fuel management system is $7,700. It's almost eight grand with tax. So that's going to have to happen. Uh, in order for me to build this car properly, I'm going to need a MoTeC fuel system to save the transmission. Not to mention spinning ain't winning. Uh, you're going to sp spin like crazy with 900 wheel in this car without drag radials. Uh, so with a decent set of drag radials and MoTeC fuel management system, this car will be nasty. It, it, it'll be just sick. But we're looking at about $18,000 for the MoTeC and the turbos. It's a lot of fucking money. And I, so I don't know. Uh, or just go all out and see some compounds in the... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um... Yeah, 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 Scotty, the six-speed for sure. Um, I do have a tuner lined up. I have Palm Beach Dino. So, you know, it's just the sticks. He does have the stock trans, but he says he's having trouble getting it into third gear and it's starting to be uh, a little bit stubborn. So I just have to be careful of that. That's all I have to do is be careful. I think 700 wheel or 800 wheel with a good safe tune is very, very reliable for this car. Naturally aspirated, this car would probably last like 100,000 miles if you take care of it and don't beat the shit out of it. I mean, because they really, really beefed the bottom end up. So um, definitely going to get that done uh, one way or another. Fuel management's going to have to happen. I don't think I'll be racing motor tube. I don't really want anything to do with that guy. He's really like just... I don't know, just negative Nancy, and I don't, I don't like it. But who knows? Maybe he'll grow up in the future. Who knows? You met him in 09. Oh, you mean what's his name there? Uh, Eric Brooks. Yeah, I've heard of I heard his name, but I'm not 100% sure if I knew who he was before you told me. But I, I had heard the name before. Uh, but I guess it, it makes sense now I know who he is. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, definitely going to ignore him for sure. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I've been working all day. I'm super tired. Um, I appreciate that, Dave. Uh, so I hope you guys are enjoying the content. What's up, Frost? Enough motor poop stuff <laughs> for sure. So I hope you guys are enjoying the content. I've literally been working 12 hours on the vlog today. A lot of exciting stuff. Still have to edit it. I still got to finish getting the bumper on and finish the vlog, but I wanted to hit you guys the live stream so you guys know exactly what's going on. Uh, wanted to do that, so keep you guys in the loop, which I always try to do. Um, and since you guys stuck around so long, if everybody right now smashes that like button, I'll give you a sneak peek at the red badge. The red GT350R badge on the bumper. I'll show you guys. Well, I appreciate that AFK9. So let's smash that like button up there. There we go. I'll show you guys the GT350R badge, what it looks like on the bumper even before the vlog goes up tomorrow night. So here we go. And be sure to share this video with everyone, of course. Ready? Here we go. Dun, da, da, da. All right. What do you guys think? So... That's a sneak peek. Do you guys like it? I think it looks good. I, I really think it looks great. So um, it's going to be it's gonna be looking pretty sick, if you ask me. I really want to get the full look going on. I think the red looks amazing. And we're going to get the back one as well. 
Uh, and once I do the back one with the spoiler, it's pretty much going to be a GT350R. The only thing that's not GT350R at this point, besides interior stitching components, is the brake calipers and wheels. And I got the brake calipers going on in the next month or so. So it's going to be pretty much identical. Um, so, yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean... Uh, the only thing, the only difference between an R and a 350 when I'm done is just, I mean, a lot of R owners take their wheels off because the carbon fiber gets damaged or they sell them and move on to something else. So um, the only thing that's really, you know, going to be different is just the stitching on the center console, the stitching on the steering wheel, uh, the red emblem on the dash and the seats. And I really don't care about the seats because they're identical to the 350. They just look different. But exterior-wise, it's going to look like an R. Um, the wheels are amazing, but they're not worth $24,000 to me because they weigh 18 pounds, whereas Project 6GR wheels, they only weigh 23 or 24 pounds. These ones are 33. So I can knock off 70% of the GT350R's weight. I can knock off 70% of it for 1600 bucks. So I'm going to get the Project 6GR wheels along with the red calipers, and then the entire exterior is going to be Ford Racing or Ford Performance and GT350R. So this is pretty cool. Um Oh, yeah, Dave, you're already on top of that, huh? Yep, they make some good wheels. Um, so, yeah, it's not authentic GT350R, but it's going to look like one. It's going to handle like one. And because I have the 2020, my rear sway bar is the exact same as the R, which means once I change the lowering springs out or the springs out, it'd be pretty much, you know, a lower GT350R is what it would be. It would be like, taking it 350R and throwing forward performance uh, springs on it. Although the sway bar is a little bit stiffer in, in the non-R versus R in the front, just a little bit, which creates a little more understeer. And I hate that. So it's not going to matter as much once I'm done. Yeah, I'm putting uh, Ford performance springs. They're over there in that white box. They're going on tomorrow um, and if I don't like how the rear end handles, I'm going to end up putting BMR's rear springs in because um, without getting too technical in this video, the front springs of the GT350 are linear. The rear are dual rate. The Ford Performance are progressive, and I don't like progressive springs for a track car. I just don't. Um, so... It's a hundred. It's a two hundred one pounds per inch in the front is the spring rate. The rear is eight hundred sixty seven pounds per inch, um, and the GT three fifty R is two forty front nine. I believe it's nine fourteen in the rear. Well, the Ford Performance is two fifty in the front, so they're actually going to be better than the GT three fifty R. So the fronts are good. The rears are 565, but they're progressive, and you don't get to 765 till you hit three inches. Uh, so that's pretty aggressive cornering, meaning that the car is going to understeer a little bit more than it does now. So I may have to go with BMR, and I can't stand BMR's front springs because they lower the front 0.3 inches, but they lower the back 0.5. Like, who would want to slam the rear end? It just doesn't make any sense. I don't know why they did it. Don't care. It won't look good. It'll look quite odd. They're killing off um, the little bit of rear rake that comes on these cars to make them look good. And I'm not a fan of that. So Ford Performance in the front, BMR in the rear. Then you're essentially getting 0.78 drop in the front and 0.55 in the rear. That's kind of perfect if you ask me. Uh, it's really the ideal setup. But then again, maybe Ford Performance will actually drive good. Who knows? Um, I'm not sure what my build date is. I'll have to check. Uh, does it already have Brembo's? Yes, just not the red ones. Um, SRTBA 918. It's been under construction now for three hours, maybe. I've had it up three hours. <coughs> um, I'd have to check my build date. Let me see. Um... Let's see, February of 20. 
That's what I think that's what it looks like. February of 20. Yep, it is right there. So my car is um, is only two months old from the factory. So when I bought this car, it was only it was only two or three weeks old when I picked it up. That's pretty cool. I can't believe this car was legitimately built only three weeks before I actually went looking for it. Um, it's like a match made in heaven because I started looking at GT350s in February and this car was literally just coming across the assembly line being built while I started looking. And I found this car uh, on March. No, actually it was like February 23rd or 24th. Like this car probably got to the dealership in Long Island like days before I even called. So then I had to get it transferred over to PA. So this car went through a little bit of uh, a travel to get to me, which is really cool because it started off in Michigan and got sent over to Long Island. Then it got sent back to Pennsylvania. So uh, it's had its little journey going on. I've got 1,900 miles on it now, but I enjoy driving it. Like I said, it's the best car I've ever owned and the best car I've ever driven. And that's saying a lot considering I've owned like 23 or 24 cars in my life. And I've driven Type R Integras, right-hand drive cars, muscle cars, pony cars. I've had GT500s. I've had Mustang GTs. I've had LX Fox Body 5.0. I've had three Hellcats, one of which is a red eye. And I can just tell you that this is definitely uh, the best handling, most fun car I've ever driven. Mad Max has like 111,000. Uh, but I bought Mad Max when it had like 101 or 100. I've only put 11,000 miles in the truck in a year and a half. I don't drive the truck a lot either. Um, I do have the shark fin antenna. Uh, Gen 1 C8RS. Well, I'm not quite 200 pounds. I'm like 150. So be like 3650 with me in it. And at five pounds per horsepower, based on that estimation, this car would be good for like high nines because the red eye was 4.8 without me in it. So that's what I was saying. This car with 750 wheel is the equivalent of having a Hellcat with 900 plus because of how light the car is. You don't need 900 wheel. You really only need seven or eight. This car is so light. It's just a lot of weight. A thousand pounds is so much. Um, oh, you don't like the shark fin on the 2020s? I think it's all right. I don't know where the antenna was before. It's better than my old three valve. The antenna used to be over there on the fender. It's <laughs> absolutely hilarious. Oh my God. Um, uh, I got you. I was late. Did you decide on where you're putting the twin turbos? Um, I am on IG as well, bro. Yep. Um, I am going to go with, Hellion's sleeper kit. That's what I'm going to do. Um, what does your antenna look like, Dave? Because uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what the previous model... I, I have to go back and look. I don't know why I've never looked, but... Oh, there is one more thing I got to show you guys. Okay, so check this out. This is really weird. This is quite odd. I don't understand it, uh, but maybe maybe you guys will know. What do you guys see different about that? Okay, Look at that rear deck lid for the GT350R, okay? Now look at it very closely, okay? Now let's go back here and look at the GT350. What do you guys see that's different besides the badge? Don't worry about the badge because we know the badge is brushed aluminum. It's not red, but what do you guys see that's different? Look at that back deck lid right there. Look very carefully, study it, and then look over here. It's just, it's really weird. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, I'm sure, yeah, you guys already noticed it. So, I appreciate that SRTBA. And Mike, you're right. Dave, yep. Nice, no speed. Awesome. Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe it's because they sent me a rear deck lid uh, from 2018 or 2017. I don't know. Or maybe the GT350Rs just don't have the lines. 
Um, so I guess that Decla they sent me was for an old model year. I'm going to have to talk with them about it and see if they have a deck lid from a 19 to 20. But then again, I don't know if the GT350R gets that change. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to find out if the 350R didn't get the lines and it never got the change, we're good. But if it did, I may have to put that emblem on my deck lid because I really like the lines. Um, maybe you guys don't. I don't know. I think the lines are pretty cool. It's not that big of a deal, but I, I like the lines. Oh, it does have the lines. Okay. Which means they sent me the wrong, <laughs> they sent me the wrong um, deck lid. Okay. That really sucks. I'll have to ask them if if they can do one for the 2020 and I'll email the guy over at Quirk Parts Tell them to send me a return label and send me another one before Tuesday or Wednesday and we'll be good. Um, but I really do like the lines. I really do. So I'm gonna have to take care of that. But I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this video. I got a lot more stuff coming, like I said, in the GT350 and the 350R conversion that's going on right now. I wanna thank you guys so much for stopping in. Uh, be sure to check out the Shelby merchandise below the video as well as the join button. When you guys join, it really supports the channel. You guys get behind the scenes access to stuff that I don't share on the normal section of the channel. Also wallpaper and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for upcoming videos tomorrow night. And uh, we're going to be streaming tomorrow and have a vlog. Good night to everybody in here. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. You guys are the best. So we'll see you guys tomorrow night in the next video. Take care, guys. Be safe out there. And of course, stay tuned for the next upload. Peace out, guys.